Car Cost Canada provides the dealer cost, a list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. The link is in the description below. We're in one of the hottest places on the planet. We're not in Africa, and this is not a zebra car. It's not a zebra car, it's a mule. This is a test mule, a vehicle they use to test in hot weather conditions. Any guesses what it is? Give you a hint, it's got four wheels. Five wheels, got a steering wheel. All right. It's really hot, I mean like really hot. We're getting inside. what we're driving yet. It's an SUV. Yes. It's it, black and white. <laughs> <laughs> it only comes in two colors, black and white. This one. Uh, any guesses? Now, do you think it's maybe a Ford? Mm, uh, it might be. Uh, I don't know. What could it be? It's got five seats, so it's just a two-row utility. Have you guessed what it is yet? No? What is it? It is the Volkswagen Atlas. Sport Cross. No, Cross Sport. He's cross got a, Sport. He's got a cross. I up. got a cross. I want to call it the Sport Cross. Anyway, that will come as we get used to what this vehicle is in the marketplace. Yeah, so it's a brand new two row, five passenger utility from Volkswagen. Yes, and normally when we're filming our reviews, one thing that we always do is we turn the fan down for the air conditioning <laughs> system. So, so it's too loud. So we've, we turn it down as much as we can. We're in Death Valley right now. It is... It's 118 degrees Fahrenheit, yes. which is 46 degrees Celsius. Yikes. And I'm sorry, we need the air conditioning on full blast, and it is. Yes, even at full blast, it's still hot here. <laughs> it is so hot. We are living in an oven. And that's why they have vehicles in places like this. And we had the head of Volkswagen um, testing what they do to test their vehicles to get them ready for the market tell us this is the kind of torture testing they do to alter their vehicles continuously to make sure they're up to the rigors so we actually have an Airstream trailer behind us how much does it weigh about 3,000 pounds just over 3,000 pounds and we're in a brand new vehicle and we're climbing elevation out of Death Valley into the mountains and the thermostat is exactly right in the middle so that's major accomplishment that, that's huge that's, that's I wouldn't want to take my own vehicle and pull something in this type of heat yeah, seriously well, maybe in the winter but not at this time of year so it's crazy yeah these are the sort of torture tests they do so Brian do you remember uh, driving the Atlas for the very first time we had a chance to drive it um, and Ever since it's been out, it has been an absolute monster sales hit for VW. Well, all their SUVs, their Tiguan and the Atlas in North America, in two years, this is, it's, the majority of their sales are, are the, those two vehicles. Yeah, they went from about, um, you know, roughly 20% of their mix was SUVs just two years ago, and now it's over 50%. And so this is going to add a lot of potential volume for Volkswagen. And the thing is, what have we seen in the last, even the last year? We've seen a new mid-size five-seater uh, SUV from Honda yep. called Passport. Passport. And then you had a chance to drive one in Quebec. What was that? The Chevy Blazer. Yeah, so we have all of these mid-size SUVs that are going back to the way midsize SUVs used to be, which was just two rows. Two rows. So what they've done in their studies, what they found is that the three row SUV buyer or the utility buyer, they're looking for the number one thing is the seating and then value mm -hmm. and it goes on and on and on. But for the two row, number one is design. Design and then all wheel drive yep. is a high factor as well. Um, you know, the one vehicle that has had this kind of market all to itself for many, many years was the Grand Cherokee, right? Yeah. Uh, but this is bigger. You know, the Atlas is the biggest in its class of three row midsize SUVs, tons of leg room for all three rows. And now this will be the biggest in this category, which is the two row five uh, seater version. Now, this is based on the same underpinnings of the regular Atlas. Mm -hmm. So under the hood, two different powertrains. Yep. You got the four cylinder. Yep. Yeah, now that's the thing is, I bet you a lot of people don't even know a four cylinder is available in, in the Atlas or in this Atlas cross, cross sport. sport. 
Um, yeah, and the interesting thing is I hadn't had a chance to drive it until today. From Las Vegas down here to Death Valley, they gave us an Atlas, and there was three of us with our luggage in the car driving down the highway. It's a two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder with 235 horsepower and 258 pounds 58 of torque. 58 pound of torque. And I'm going to tell you, it was surprisingly good. Now, it doesn't have a lot of passing power on the highway, but for just everyday driving, I was shocked. And here's the big difference. Now, for 2000, well, the new Atlas, or the next generation Atlas, meaning the 2020 Atlas, and this Cross Sport, it'll have it with standard four motion in Canada. Yeah, yeah, you can't get the front wheel drive in Canada for, for either of the power uh, powertrains. Now, what we're driving here is the V6. VR6. VR6, and that's matched to the eight speed automatic as well. And that puts up 275. Six. 276 horsepower. And 266 pound feet of torque. Yes. Now this engine has been around since the early 90s. It started years ago in Corrado. Oh and yeah, that remember was that? That was, that was yeah. a great car. And then it, it moved through the entire Volkswagen group. Porsche used it in Cayenne until about a year ago. And uh, it is a wonderful, wonderful engine. It loves um, it loves gasoline sometimes. It can be a little heavy on fuel, but it is a workhorse. It's going to deliver the mail every single day. And we have behind us a Gulfstream trailer, and it's doing a fine job keeping up even in these temperatures. Now, what's different about this on the outside? Well, we can't really comment on too much because it's, it's, camo. it's, it's camo. It's camo, not camo. It's, it's camo flawed. Camo is camo. But what we do know, it's just over uh, five inches shorter. 5.7 inches shorter. Than the standard Atlas, but the wheelbase is the same. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've made that little bit crop in the back. But oh, look at this with this hill, this looks really cool. Um, they made a little bit of crop, but you still get a lot of cargo room. Well, just think about it. You don't have a third row, right? And yeah. 5.7 inches shorter. The cargo space is just as big. And the, and the one thing about this vehicle that I absolutely love is if you have people that go in the back seat all the time and they want to spread out, kids that are fussy about that kind of thing, this has all of the same leg room as the Atlas second row. You don't get the third row, but you get all that cargo. Now, here's the thing is, you and I were in China, and what did we get a chance to see? We saw the Terramont X, yeah. and that's essentially, it's based on what this is, I think, is gonna look like. Well, it's gonna be a little bit more rugged. Yeah, well, you know? hey, let's just back up a second. Okay. In China, they have an Atlas, and it's called Terramont. Yes. And in China, at the Shanghai show, we saw the Terramont X, which is their coupe version of the Atlas. So the general shape is the same, but I think a bit of the bodywork and the trim is different because in China, what do they love in China? They love chrome. And I think, we can't see it on this because it's got the camo all over it, but I, I don't know, but I'm guessing that it might have a little bit more of that rugged look like kind of Honda did with Passport. Mm -hmm. They did this sort of maybe darker, dark grill and darker wheels. We're gonna have to wait and see, but if I was doing it for the North American market, that I, I kind of give it a bit of that, I hate to say it, a bit of the Jeep vibe. They might go that way. Yeah, so speaking of that back seat, let's have a look at the dad bod cam. Oh yeah. You know this, what? This is good. Everybody that asks me what's the best utility for space, hands down, it's the Atlas, and this gets the exact same leg room in the second row. It's a huge vehicle. Yeah, and the thing is, it doesn't slide fore and aft. You know the Atlas, you can slide it fore yeah. and aft. That's to make room for the third row, but, but it, it does, doesn't do that. It does recline and quite a bit. Yeah. yeah that's comfortable. Oh yeah, a lot of room for dad bods, even dad bods bigger than ours. <laughs> And the cargo uh, space is absolutely enormous. You get this huge panoramic roof as well on this model. That's what that's what this vehicle is all about, being big. It's funny, you know, the, the Germans or Volkswagen waited to be one of the very last to come into this space. And uh, I'm going to sit upright because it makes my double chin look big. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, uh, and, and you know what? They, instead of competing with everybody else, they said, we're just going to make it bigger. And you know what? There's a, there's a market for bigger. All right. Now, one thing we didn't mention, this does have the fifth generation four motion all wheel drive system, the same as the standard Atlas, but with an all wheel drive system, the best way to test it, take it off road. All right, we're gonna ditch the trailer though. Yeah, that'd be a little bit hard with the trailer. So they took the trailer off, and now you get to drive it with no trailer, that's more fun. 
it does feel a little bit different. No, I say a little bit because I did drive it with the trailer a little bit and it felt like it was barely there. Yeah, that's true. Well, not, a, not a big trailer, about 3,000 pounds and a nice one too, nice Airstream. Uh, so we're doing a little bit of off-road now. I'm not sure why they always, with an SUV, take us off-road because we all know most people do not drive off-road. But anyway, it, of course it can do it. It has a terrain management system yep. if you get the, uh, the V6, the VR6. So the latest fifth generation for motion. It's the same thing, two things. If you want to have a German utility, uh, you know, non-premium, not Mercedes-Benz or Audi or BMW. This is kind of what you can get in the five-passenger, right? Yeah. yeah. Any, any other suites? Um, well, I like the fact they're bringing it to market. I think that's good. It kind of replaces the Touareg that has been gone now for a couple of years. Any sours? The sour, well, we don't know exactly what it looks <laughs> like. So that's kind of a minor sour, even though we have a really good idea what it looks like with the Terramont X. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be different. It's, it's going to have the same shape, but I think the way they execute it will be a little bit different. Yeah, that's a good indication. We don't know the pricing. That's another sour. Uh, I think you need to look at competitive vehicles like the Honda Passport that just came out. So wherever they land in the market, I think we're going to see very similar pricing here. Back on the sweet side, though, the towing ability is 5,000 pounds, but doing it in 120 degree temperature is pretty impressive. It is so hot here, seriously. We've never experienced heat like this before. <laughs> in our lives. Just think, if you have one of those hot air fryers, yeah. you know, to roast chickens or something, yep. it's like that. Yeah. The, the outside, you can feel your skin being seared. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, like, <laughs> it's not a feeling I enjoy. <laughs> no, it is not enjoyable whatsoever, hands down. Oh, we should mention one more thing. What's that? That, uh, that we found out is, with the two row, yeah. you lose one AC condenser. Compressor. Compressor. Compressor condenser. Anyway, okay. there's a second unit in the second row with the regular Atlas that cools the second and third row. You don't get that with this. And we did notice a bit of temperature difference on the inside between the regular Atlas and this one, but this is an extreme uh, case, right? This is extreme everything right now. <laughs> Not only did they camo the outside, they tried to camo the inside. They yeah. put this plastic sheet. We know what it looks like underneath, but I don't think we can show you what it looks like, though. It, it looks exactly like the Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone. Eight inch screen, standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, digital instrument cluster available on the top trims. So what you get with Atlas in the front, you're going to get that with the Sport Cross. Cross Sport. Cross, sport, cross, cross, sport cross, cross, cross Sport. It's one of the two. <laughs> All right, Brian, there's another version of Sweet, Sweet and, and sour. sour. And if you're watching this either on Everyday Reviews or Motormouth, make sure that you subscribe to Sweet and Sour as well if you like to see more of these videos. Yeah, we're just giving you a taste on our individual channels to see what we're going to be doing over at Sweet and Sour. So the link is in the description go below. Go there, subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications, and keep an eye out for more uh, videos coming soon. All right. Thanks for watching. Car Cost Canada provides the dealer cost, a list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. The link is in the description below.